Okay, so we can continue. Uh, we have a plan. Okay, we have a plan for uh, deciding which pages we want to render and which are the addresses uh, that we want to associate with each of them. How can we implement them? So, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, the routes uh, and route components uh, are a sort of a pattern matching uh, structure where we have different uh, alternatives and one of them is selected according to the best match uh, to a given path, okay, to a given stream. So uh, we have uh, the alternative version of a component uh, is uh, wrapped in the routes component. So routes with an S plural is uh, read it as uh, switch, okay? Read it as select, choose. Choose one route and the route component is normally a child, a direct child of routes. So we have routes with many route singular inside. And routes doesn't have any attributes, it just you know, delimits the set of possible route elements. Uh, and each route uh, has two main uh, attributes, two main properties, a path, which is the string to match, the location to match, and element is what is to render in this case. Hmm? This is the, the basic, uh, the basic uh, uh, structure. Um, so, for example, here we have uh, a path of uh, home that renders the home component and path of news that renders the news feed component. This means that uh, the whole routes block will actually be home or news feed, one of the two, or none of the two if the URL doesn't match uh, neither of these uh, two strings. Okay? <coughs> it will never render more than one route. No, nothing is rendered or one of the route elements is rendered according to the matching rules, okay? Um, and the matching rules is, uh, uh, with us, is not a regular expression, it's a simplified pattern matching when we have different uh, allocation made of different segments and every segment may be just a static segment, so just a string, a constant, or maybe a dynamic segment, so a parameter that will be substituted by a value, like we had here, for example, in a tree or seven, some values that we want to inject into the location. And so we just have the colon, uh, semicolon, so the colon syntax. Uh, Okay, for specifying this is a dynamic segment that will be replaced by an actual value that can be a string or, or a number. Or the star segment uh, that means uh, everything below from this point on. So can be, it will match anything. Okay, so we have this kind of examples uh, in addition to those that we already shown. Uh, we have many uh, routes uh, and uh, the rule is that uh, the most specific one is selected. Then, of course, the documentation will tell you in detail what are the rules for the most specific ones, but this means that, uh, for example, uh, if you have, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, two rules, uh, two paths that potentially would match something, and you will choose uh, the one that has more, more, uh, more information, for example, um, in this case, there are, there are no conflicts, okay? But if we add uh, docs asterisk, we match in a route, and then docs uh, help is another route. Potentially, help could also be the asterisk, okay? But in this case, help as a string, as a static segment, is uh, more specific than the asterisk, and so that is the one that will be matched. And also, so it means that if something can be matched by a static segment, it's preferred to something that can be matched by a dynamic segment, which is preferred to something that will be matched by the asterisk. 
to make it simple. Then the rules are more complex, of course, because they need to take into account also the depth of the matching and so on. But usually I, I, I try to uh, say avoid creating uh, ambiguities, okay, if possible. But the, uh, the, the mechanism is, is designed in a way that the different routes can be uh, specified in any order. So the matching rule doesn't depend on the order of the routes, so you don't need to read them sequentially. Many routes, they all compare to the location and the more specific one wins, and the which one wins doesn't depend on the order and only depends on the pass. Um, okay. This is a single level switch, medically. Uh, you could also do some more complex no, structure, like, uh, for example, in our example, we have that uh, uh, the list of answers and the edit functionality and the add functionality are different routes, okay? But all of them should display at the top the name of the question, of the selected question. Right? So we could have a route common to all of three that will display the question name plus three sub-routes, uh, uh, nested routes, that can display all the answers or the edit form or the add form. Just to factor something that should be repeated. Okay, you can have three different routes. This will render, just to make the example, this part at the beginning should always be rendered in these three different routes. We all want to see the name of the question. So we can replicate it in the three routes. Element contains this, element contains that, element contains the same thing, plus something, something specific. Or we can say, okay, all the three should render a part, and then we nest inside the route another route that will select the detail of our page. Hmm? We nest, and then this can be done easily by nesting route inside route. So we have only one route with the S that contains a set of route alternatives. Some route alternatives can nest, can contain, nested inside them, other route elements, okay? Uh, that will be nested and will be, you know, a special version of the same page in some way. Uh, in this case, when, he, when we have nested routes, uh, we need to uh, specify how and where the nested uh, content will appear inside the, the external page, and we have a special component called the outlet. But let's give that, <laughs> let's see that in, with, an, with an example, because no, it's, uh, it's easy to do, but it's <laughs> uh, complex to just to, uh, to explain. So this, here we have an example of nested routes. How do we read it? Left hand side, we read, okay, we have one page that always shows this title, no matter what the location is. Okay, it's outside the routes, so it's always rendered. Then we have the routes that we select one route out of uh, two alternatives, or three alternatives, basically. You see, we have uh, uh, these two elements are nested inside that one. So this means that everything that starts with slash will render an element called layout. Then, after slash, if we have about, we also render a, a component called about. Or if after slash we have dashboard, we will render a component named dashboard. So let's imagine we have the about page. So what should we render, layout or about? 
Because here we said, okay, if it's under slash, we render layout. If it's uh, slash about, render about. And so if you render about, do we render layout also, or what, what do we do? So that's, now, when we have nested routes, uh, each uh, level of nesting specifies a component to render, and we cannot render more than one. That's the role of outlet, which actually allows us to render more than one component. So if the path matches mesh, we do render layout. But layout inside should have a placeholder called outlet. And outlet means here, I want you to insert the, my nested routes or the component that will be selected from my nested routes, or from my child routes. <coughs> so we are going to render this fragment here. And in place of outlet, we are going to render the about component. So when we have a nesting of routes, the external routes, the nest, the one that contain the nesting, should have in, the, in their respective components an outlet component. Otherwise, okay, if we don't have outlet here, this one, this one will never be shown because there will be no location, no place where to render it. Okay, so nesting routes means having okay specification of the nesting of, of location strings, and also the specification on the nesting of components. The components that render for children routes is rendered, inserted inside the outlet component of the father route. And this can also go to three or four levels if we want to make it complex. Hmm? So we have a constant part of the page, always the same. We have a constant part uh, of everything that matches slash, which is always the same, and we have a variable part that depends on the matching of the rest. Matching of the rest. Any question? Sorry, more than one outlet. Yeah, yeah, will replicate the component more. Yeah, we, about will appear twice, yes. If you have two, two out, if you re, uh, duplicate out here in another part, uh, then the about component will be rendered in two different places. It's like a, a calling a function. If you call it more than once, uh, it will be executed twice. And every time it will render its own content. So it does, it's not very useful. You cannot have more than one outlet uh, independent from each other. So say, okay, these are, well, I have a placeholder one and placeholder two. This cannot be done because the matching is always one match. So then no possibility of matching more than one. Uh, there are some special cases for the matching rules. One is the so-called index route. So what do we render when the URL is only slash. So slash about, okay, we render layout with the about inside the outlet. Uh, slash, L, uh, slash dashboard, we render layout with dashboard inside the outlet. But slash would be a layout with an empty outlet. So we want probably to specify what to insert in the outlet in the default case, and that can be done with index. So you see, index replaces path. There's no path in here in this route. And you say, OK, if there is no specific path, take this one. This is the default content. So if you are, this can be inserted as a child route. And if the, only the parent matches, but none of the other children match, I will use this one. It's called the index because not only is for the first page or the first subsection, it can only be called, we can call it default, it's the same, okay? If, no, if the parent route matches, but none of the other children match, this is the rule of index. It only makes sense when you have the rest of the routes. And uh, uh, two other special cases. A layout route is a route uh, in, nest, in a nesting of routes uh, that doesn't have any path, 
and this will be always merged. So we want all the webs, all the pages in the website, or all the pages in a section to have some you know, header or some footer or some column that needs to be rendered in any case. So we can have just one level nesting with a route without path, and this will always match. And then the matching will go on to the next uh, level of nesting. Hmm? Um, and there's uh, another route which is no match when no, everything else fails. Uh, we can put the asterisk, OK. Uh, otherwise, can render this. Should, <laughs> normally, that should be an error page or some, something like that. Uh, I didn't expect this uh, uh, to, to be selected. It's different from the index. Index matches if no string is provided. Asterisk matches if some string is provided, but is not matched by any other uh, child. Hmm? So these are the uh, these are is a, an attempt of a, of a simple example with all the rules uh, together. <coughs> so what do we have? Slash layout. Then inside the layout, uh, we have uh, five, uh, sorry, four routes. One is the default route, the index route, the home route. So saying, if the URL doesn't have anything more than this string, so it's just slash, we render home. If we have about, we render about. If you have uh, about inside the output of layout, sorry. Home also will be rendered inside the outlet of layout. All these routes are nested inside that one, and so all these elements will be inside the outlet. So slash, we render layout with home. Slash about, we render layout with about. Slash dashboard, we render layout with dashboard. Anything else, starting with slash, of course, we render layout with no match inside. Okay, there is just composition of different, uh, let's say, uh, concatenation of strings uh, and matching levels. Quite. Uh, just remember the outlet here. Hmm? And this is about how to select, given a URL, what to render. And the other half of the part of the story is how to change the location. How uh, to change the location is very easy. We just use a link or use navigate. Link is a component that will render a normal link. <coughs> a normal link, but with a different behavior. Okay? A link that looks like a normal link, but when you click on it, instead of navigating to another page, doing a get in the browser, will just change the internal location. Uh, the attribute is uh, two, link two uh, is not, uh, like uh, uh, is like an anchor, but an anchor will be a href. So we are not using href here, but two, but it's just a, a detail. So it's an hyperlink which is router aware, so it does the right thing uh, with the router. This is good for clicking on images uh, or on links uh, or whatever when you just have a, an, ex an explicit click. If you do want to navigate uh, by clicking on a button or some other submit, submit button, action, or something like that, uh, of course, you are in a callback function. And you can use, uh, use navigate, which is a hook that will give you a navigate function that can be called. Forget about the old navigation mechanisms that are handled by the browser. So no, we don't want to see any hyperlink. We don't want to see any form action. So everything should be, if we want to have a router working, done with links and navigation. Hmm? Otherwise, uh, they will reload the whole application. So you, if you keep the console open and you, can, you navigate to something, you see that all the application is reloaded, there's something wrong. Hmm? And um, OK. Having links is very easy. Link slash to, link to, and so on. <coughs> All the URLs are normally relative, so if you are already inside some route, uh, they will append. And for navigate, um, the use navigate hook 
when you call the hook, it will provide you with a function name, with a function. Normally, we call it navigate. And whenever, so use navigate doesn't have any parameter. You're, you're not, it's a hook. So you call it at the beginning, but it doesn't do anything. It only returns you a function, and when you actually need to change the page, you call navigate with the new URL in our, in your, as a parameter. Okay, so use navigate gives you the navigation function. So you can navigate, uh, the user can click or any other action can trigger the call of this uh, navigation function. Um, there are two, um, well, two variants of link. One is called link and the other is called nav link. link. It's not for today, but if you want to customize. NavLink is a link that knows whether it's currently matching or not the route. What do I mean? Imagine you have inside, uh, um, you're creating you know, a menu of items, okay? Like the filter that you have in the lab. So you click on one of the filters, you will change the route, and the changing the route will change the list of things that are displayed. But in the menu, you know which one was selected. And usually you show it in bold or in a different color to show the user which filter is currently being applied. So this is what NavLink is doing. NavLink is a link that, of course, navigates to a new URL, but will also know when the URL that is currently shown is the one that it would navigate to. So if the two is equal to the location, basically. If two matches, so it means that we already navigated to this section. And it will automatically apply a uh, um, CSS class called active, so that the rendering of this button, of this menu item, or whatever can be, can react. Okay, so it's a, a link that will highlight itself if it already matches the current location. It's good for making uh, tabs uh, or um, menus or sections of the website where the currently selected section is already highlighted. Uh, it can be done in a, in a very simple way by defining the behavior of the active class or in a very fancy way by providing a callback to a class name where you can apply your own classes according to. Only when uh, the element is active or it's selected, okay. If you want uh, to do something fancy, you can look at the documentation of this component. There are, there are several, several examples. Um, dynamic routes are meshed uh, normally with uh, uh, any, any content. Uh, the, the, of course, this, the goal of dynamic route is being able to extract the actual value. Okay? We can match this one, it is a question slash three, will be written, of course, like questions slash question ID. So it's a parameter segment that we call question ID. Inside our code, and this is matched with the rules that we saw before. So this will match, this question this three will be matched by this route. And the, the number three, or the, it's not a number, sorry, the string three will, can be retrieved by extracting the QID variable using the use params hook. Use params returns an object, a JavaScript object, that contains all the parametric segments that have been meshed. So name would be QID and the value would be three. So we can extract the information and use it, of course, in other. So we are matching here and post, inside the post component, you see, inside the post, we can extract the IDs or the the dynamic segment that were uh, selected. Hmm? Of course, we, if we provide a value, we need to be able to use it. Um, the value is not extracted in the route element, but it's extracted in the child component. Okay, inside the post, inside the element that we are rendering. Um, okay. By the way, if we have uh, nested routes, uh, you have different, you may have different uh, uh, dynamic segments in the different levels of nesting. 
the good news is that the, the nest, the final nested element will have access to all of that, all of those, all values. So you don't need to collect one and pass it down to a prop uh, because every element will know, will see all the previous uh, uh, dynamic segment that led uh, to its invocation. Hmm? Okay. Um, well, these are just two, two simple examples of whether we extract one object and then we, we use the, the property or we just destructure the object into a variable, but of course the behavior is the same. Um, okay, I would list this for, uh, for, for later on as a more, say, advanced information. Uh, I would just tell you, uh, this slides is for when you, we need to pass some information when you navigate to a new page. Okay, there are, there are some special cases you need to maybe to, to remember something when you go to another page, uh, or we have uh, some dynamic segments which are in the, in the form of a query string instead of a URL. Uh, but let's see, let's first maybe do the, sim the implementation of the simple things and then we come back to the more advanced stuff. Okay, so link, use navigate on one side, routes, route on the other side. That's it. Okay. Main JSX activates the browser, the router, and it's uh, okay. We just need to, to go to app. And reason about app in the way that we did before. Uh, so uh, right now, app is rendering a navigation bar, it rendering a question components, it rendering an answers table. And then inside answers, remember we have this mode that is able to specify what we want to do. Uh, sorry. This one. Uh, so let's go to app and try to think about uh, what are the real constant parts that we want in the, in the whole application. And those can be left out, uh, outside of a route component. And then which are the parts that should be customized according to the URL, and they, those will be inside a routes component where we uh, map the different uh, routes and so on. So, uh, the navigation bar could always be there, okay? It's the initial part there where we have uh, the, the language toggle and the name of the website. Uh, it's okay. It can be done. It can be left uh, outside the route. Everything else uh, should be customized because uh, for example, the question component that shows the name of the question only makes sense if we are already inside the question. Why, if you have the list of questions, it doesn't make sense, okay? There's no uh, single question component with a question ID. If we have the list of the question, we don't have one selected ID. <coughs> so the idea could be to have some routes, Define some routes here. Did it get imported? No. Routes, so let's import at the beginning. Import routes and route from React router DOM. Okay, so let's go down again to the rendering part, okay. So these ones should be, let's comment those for the moment. Let's get them out of the way. So our main page would be just the navigation bar, which is always there. plus 
a rouse element, which now, right now is empty. What did we decide? We decided that uh, there can be one route matching uh, the list of questions. Okay, and if we are matching the slash, then we need to render the list of questions, right? So with the element would be the list of questions. We don't have a component yet for that. Uh, okay, let's just write uh, some text, uh, list of questions. Sorry, for the syntax, we need the braces. Okay, so if we match this slash, we will render a list of questions that we still don't have. And clicking on one of those would go to the question number one, question number two, question number three, or whatever. Okay, so in this case, we have uh, uh, another route. That can be, let's do them one by one, then we see if we can ask them or can, but questions, slash, question ID. Okay, that will render an element that is, let me write a text, then we um, list of answers. to one question. So, uh, there's something missing. Okay, I need to close the text. Okay? So, this, the slash, write this. If I write questions, slash uh, three, it will go to this uh, list of answers to one question. You see that if I modify the URL by hand, if you look at, keep an eye on the network, uh, network tab, if I change it, this, it's reloading the whole application. This is, of course, not, we want, it's not what we want to do. It's what we want, we want to avoid re reloading the application. Okay? Right now, it's only playing with the URL. But, but we could do that, for example, by uh, saying go to three. Let's put a link here just to see how it works. Let's say a link to uh, questions three. And we have maybe something like back. And link, of course, must be imported from React Router DOM. So let's make it clearer, maybe. So this is one route with an element, which is some paragraph, and another route with another element that we nest here. Like that. Of course, it's not nice to write code directly inside this element tag, so we would create some components uh, no, that uh, make it more, uh, make it, will make it cleaner. But we have a list of questions uh, that will have a, a go to three link uh, besides it that navigates to questions like three, the magic number. And the question that is should match this other path. And so if you click on this link, the location would change, 
and now the first element will not be rendered anymore and the second one will be rendered in its place in theory so if we go to the root go to three click on go to three the page changes and back it will change again you have a look here at the location it's changing a look on the right at the network panel nothing is going through so these are internal navigations without doing any call to the web server okay so that's the basic mechanism now of course we, we need <laughs> to swap this uh, list of answers to one question with the real component And by the way, this component uh, right now already has some logic inside for the mod, and also we will need to replace this logic uh, with uh, uh, something uh, which is based on routes. Okay, so let's go then step by step. Uh, so this question, I, I use question ID, uh, could call a component that is uh, something like what we. Um, as before so uh, if we are matching a question ID then we should render the information about the question the first line the top okay the question component so could this could be what we render here the list of answer to one question actually something more complex that is made of uh, question information plus uh, the list of answers or the, in, the add form or the remove form, something like that. So let's try to think about uh, the first line. It could be just uh, the question component, this one. Let's copy and paste what we had here. Copy. Well. And uh, close and break that. Can we do this? Well, uh, yes and no, because this question component uh, has, okay, likes, uh, increase likes, uh, question ID, oh, this is the problem, question.id, also question.text, uh, question.email, uh, it doesn't know the question ID. The question ID will be extracted by the location but extracting the this information should come from inside the component with the use param hook so we cannot use uh, when when we are matching the rule we cannot yet use uh, the values being matched so we should modify the component in some way okay so the component should be able to um, ID, text, email, question component, should be able to get this information by itself. So let's go to question component and assume that the question component, uh, uh, where is that, here, the question component cannot receive or will not receive the information as a property. Okay, the question number, but the question number can be extracted from the URL with the use param look. The other ones uh, oh, need, need to be fetched by the, from the state, basically. So, one step at a time. Uh, let's extract the question number by I use, sorry, uh, price number, use param of uh, use params. So we know that the question component will be called with a matching QID, sorry, QID, or maybe, let's say, Uh, 
uh, so we use the same number, name, number, params.uid. We extract all the parameters, and the one that is called QID will be saved as a const uh, number. And uh, these ones cannot be retrieved in this way. So for the moment, uh, let's just write something and see how it works. If at least we can get the number of the question. So number. Should no, sorry, I didn't save up yet. So we need to modify the element, which is question component. Likes is OK. Increase likes is OK. Question number should not be given. Question text should not be given. Email should not be given. Flash. And let's, uh, for the moment, remove this. Uh, ah, slash round. Something like that. Let's get the syntax right. The element contains a single element like that. Okay. So we are in the home page. Go to three. Like now we say in the number three, the question name and the, the email, which are displayed like that. With access. But at least three, we know that they're being extracted from here. So we need now to write the real question name and the real uh, um, uh, email of the question author that were from the question state, in a way. So we must uh, pass the whole question and then let the component extract information itself. Uh, Right now, it's still very, uh, uh, say, primitive with, because we only have the state for one question, not for a list of questions. Okay, so we are doing something only approximate. But the idea is that we give to the component the full list plus the ID of the selected one, and so the component itself can extract the data that it needs. Okay, we will do it better for the answers whether we have actually a full list. Right now we're trying just to, so it will be a, pro, a, a que, props dot question, question singular dot question, and the other will be props dot question dot, Oh, sorry, well, the one was, uh, first was text and the other was email. Text dot email. And so we can modify in app by passing this question object. Where is that? Down there. Question increase likes, question equal to question. So we are giving a copy of the state to the component. And now uh, is providing this information. OK. That was about the question. Uh, OK, sorry. There's some, oh, there's some properties made. There's Okay, we, I, I had defined uh, some property types uh, that need to be modified, but just I had marked uh, question number, question and email as uh, required uh, properties, and so it's giving me these errors. Okay, okay, so that's uh, our first route, which should always be there.
And then under this heading, heading with the question information, you should have the table or something else. Okay? So we could have something like a nested route. So I could nest inside this route, so I need to have this route uh, with a question slash ID. We can define some sub routes uh, like route uh, path equal to add, for example, element or uh, equal to, let's write a message. Or a route index, the home page of that with an element well, that should contain the list of answers. Let's see if it works. Uh, equal. So if the route is questions, question ID, that's it. It should render the list of answers. If it's question ID slash add, it should show the add form. In theory, because right now it will not show anything because the question component doesn't have an outlet. No? These routes, if we decided to nest the routes inside this former router, uh, we should tell the question component to render also its children. So we have this container and so on, and after all that, uh, we must have an outlet. that is imported from React Router DOM. Uh, and we should wrap it in a single element, of course, like that. So in this case, we see that question slash three is rendering list of answers because we have inside the outlet, we have put uh, the um, and this is the index route. It's rendered if uh, there's nothing more in the child route than we had in the, in, the, in the father route. Instead, if we write add here, it's rendering add form. In this case, we have decided maybe that the uh, list of answer is shown when we don't want to do any operation, we want to add that we will show the form for adding, but not uh, the list anymore in this case. We are swapping out one component for another. There's one possibility, it's not just the only one. So we are defining at the up level, at the route level, some, so you see that this add here is written without the slash, so we assume that it's an extra segment to what we had there. And the list of answers component is something which is very similar to our answer component. Uh, the component name was uh, uh, answers. Of course, again, the answers component was managing its own state. We need to do it step, step by step. But at the first uh, uh, step, we could have the answers component here. Okay, so. Let's put uh, in, the, in the index route the component answers. That requires a lot of parameters. Well, the callbacks, basically. And we give it to them. So in this case, the add form, of course, doesn't exist. 
but if we go to so let's go back, uh, back to the home page of, our, of, this, of this application. The home page would have a list of questions. If we click on one of them, you see, without refreshing anything, without loading anything, we have the question component and the answer component. Now, the answer component doesn't need to manage its own state anymore. Answer is just the answer table. Doesn't need to morph into another form or to morph into an edit form. When I click on add, The add button should just change the location to the other route. Instead of modifying the internal state and so on. So we are separating also in different components of different functionality. And each functionality will have its own route. That's one possible design. So let's see what we do with, with, uh, with the add button. This is inside the answer. And uh, the add button is down here. Uh, OK. The action, the on click action was initially a set mode. So instead of making a set mode, we just make an add. Navigate to add. Navigate to add. Sorry. What is navigate? It's a function that we must. Uh, um, sorry. Yeah, it's already called back. Okay. I just want to be sure. <laughs> you need to have a callback that will call navigate, of course. Navigate is a function that we should extract from the hooks at the beginning of the component. So we should go to the beginning, where the hooks are defined. You state, you state, use context, and then const navigate equal to use navigate. And that's it. So if we test the application again, and we click on add, what we should see is that the URL should, I hope, change to question three slash add. We didn't put any um, absolute URL, so it will be relative. So we'll keep the questions and the three, and with that, and we add the add string. And it will trigger a change of routes. That will render the question information plus the add form. Yes. Use navigate is uh, uh, when we call it, uh, it will change. Uh, so we are calling it in a in a callback here. It will use navigate. Uh, sorry, use navigate is. Uh, it always provides uh, just one function. So inside one component, uh, you, uh, you only have one navigate function. You can call it in, in, in different times, in different types, uh, different places. Sorry. Uh, no, no, uh, because it's a hook. A hook is not a normal function. Okay, the hooks uh, are outside the normal uh, functional behavior, so you cannot use, uh, use navigate uh, inside the code. You navigate, the hooks should be always, remember the rule, all hooks should be at the beginning of the code without uh, any uh, conditional statement, without any loop, without any nesting or so, or so ever. So you should extract from the hook the function and then use the function whatever you want. But the, the hook itself, uh, the user, Function should always be the first instruction of every, of every component before anything else. Hmm? 
Um, okay. Okay, so this relieves, in a way, the answer component from handling its own state. The answer component should be able, like it's always in the default mode. When we go to the edit mode, uh, then uh, we just navigate uh, to edit. When we go to add, uh, we just navigate to add and so on. And the form, the add form is a, a separate component, is not uh, nested inside the answer form. Okay, so let's try to do at least some steps of it. Uh, let's think about the add. The edit will be later. So let's, uh, we navigate it to add. So what do we do with add? In add, we should uh, instantiate this answer form. This means that in our app, we, the route that corresponds to add actually already has some component we need to to play with the parameters, of course, called answer form. So, if we go here and click on add, we have the answer form. There's some detail missing because uh, we don't have the add button there. I don't know why. We don't have the, the number of the questions to add. Uh, or, uh, of course, the, the data are, are not yet there. But in automatic, and you see also I played with the history. And it's working. Because the router library re remembers the, the locations that he saw and he swapped them. So I can swap a location by clicking on a link, by using navigate, or, by, or the user can do that by using the, the browser navigation function. They all have the same effect, changing the location and retriggering the, the route processing. Now, uh, the answer form doesn't need to render the uh, sorry, the uh, where are we? Oh, this is the answer form, okay. The answer component, ah, it's, oh, it was in the, right, in the wrong file. The answer component doesn't need to be concerned with the add form. So there is no answer data, answer actions, no. It was at the beginning. This part can be thrown away because if mod add say we don't we don't have a mod add anymore this component will only have the mod default and the answer form of course should be called with the, these properties so uh, what to do with it at answer and what to do with the basically what to do with the answer and with the cancel so right now, we are not calling this component anymore for the answer component. We, we are calling it from app. And so, so we should also provide from the app form this information, this property that the component is expecting. The component is expecting, an, uh, like we said here, an add answer method which, by the way, is already defined in app. So add answer. Is already defined here, right? We already have it here. So we don't need to take it from the props. Ah. Equal to add answer. And the other prop that the answer form is expecting, uh, mode, that's, mode will be add. For the moment, we can pass it, and then we can see if we can get rid of it also. And uh, we need a cancel 
method that we can remove probably. So if we go to answer form and see how the mod and the cancel are used, uh, on, when clicking on the cancel button, it's calling the callback uh, no, cancel. We can remove this with the navigation. We are on add, we want to cancel the add, just, just, let's just navigate back to the list of questions. So it should be something like maybe navigate back one level. If it works, I'm not sure if it relatively works, but they should. Navigate, of course, should be again extracted. So at the beginning with the hooks, const navigate equal to use navigate. So I implemented the cancel button. Something is wrong here. Okay, so I f forgot to, sorry, it's a callback always. Otherwise I was calling navigate uh, when parsing, not when clicking, okay. So add, cancel. Add, I'm adding a, a, a segment, with cancel and removing that segment. And everything else is done by the route. And of course, we need a save button, and the save button, will, of course, will update the state. So nothing changes here. But we update the state and then navigate back to the table. So the, uh, the actual, what? Ah, okay, because this mode is not gen being generated, we need to generate uh, the mod property is not passed, so let's just add it as the last thing we do. In the add, we must pass a mod equal to add. So we have the add button here. That, of course, is not working right now because we did not call the right function because we, we, we missed a step but it needs to be fixed. Again, add will call the add function and then navigate back one level and we go back to the list of questions. So we can remove all the logic based on mod from uh, the table and also partially also from the form. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so it still needs some, some work, especially for passing the data and deciding where to store the data. But at the end of this game, okay, we see that we have a, a call which is more, more structured and le less call, basically, because of something that we were doing by hand, uh, now it's implicit just in the location. Uh, last uh, words, uh, uh, right now I started defining all the routes uh, at the top level, okay? In app, we are imagining all the possible structure. Nobody's forcing me to do that. The routes component can be inserted anywhere. So you could have uh, maybe one component like uh, uh, all the answer functions, and inside that component, we have another routes with its own sub routes that, of course, will be concatenated with the, with the one from the top level. So you can do all the routing in one com in the top level component, or you can do some macro routing in the top level component, and then some other, uh, having some intermediate layout component that then will schedule or uh, delegate to their own children the different uh, uh, parts. Okay. So right now I'm committing this code right now, and in the next couple of days uh, I'll try to, to complete the exercise the, and clean it up for all the leftovers. That's uh, also, <laughs> something that needs to be done carefully. Okay? So, that's all for today. Uh, have a nice day.